Hey guys, really quick before the video starts, I want to give a mention to my friend who finally started making New World content. A few of you have mentioned that waiting three days between my uploads can be quite annoying sometimes, so if you need more New World content to watch, be sure to check out his channel. I'll be linking it in the description below. He's only uploaded episode one, but he has the first 10 episodes pre-recorded, so you can safely subscribe and be sure that you're going to get at least 10 episodes out of it. He's a great guy, be sure to check him out. And now, enjoy the video. Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to episode 55 of the New World Iron Man series. If you remember, towards the end of last episode, we finally landed a legendary attunement weapon on the account. We ended up getting an Icebound Hatchet of the Soldier from an M10 Lazarus. And this hatchet, for a throwing hatchet build, is pretty much a best in slot. It's all damage with Warple, Attunement, and the best hatchet perk, Empowering Rending Throw. I'm definitely going to be experimenting more with the Throw and Hatchet build in this episode, although the servers just came back up after an update, and uh, not many people are online right now. It's just me versus Turkulon, but, you know, give it a few tosses. Obviously, it's kind of hard to hit your headshots on a moving turkey when you're lagging. Yeah, it has 10 million HP. I don't think the hatchet is good enough to solo it. I'm going to wait for some people. Finally, it looks like some reinforcements showed up. Please, send help. And it looks like the attunement procs every other thrown hatchet. Guaranteed. That's a pretty small cooldown. That's like 130 damage extra per thrown hatchet. Attunement is a really, really good perk. Oh my goodness, finally! That turkey lawn kill took 17 minutes, it's about to be night. Oh, that is just funny. I came to the Warden of Satet to get a thumbnail for episode 53, so I was just recording myself, you know, being next to the boss, trying to showcase what the boss looks like. And after I got the clip, I killed it, and it dropped the only other unique I was missing from him. Satet's Key, which is a hatchet that's not very good. I forget what the third perk is, but I don't remember it being noteworthy. This is the other item he drops, the Warden's Answer Bow, which is absolutely amazing. I guess it's good to finish off the boss while I was here. I was just getting a thumbnail, but I'll take it. Once again, I'd like to remind you guys to hit that like button, and I'll give you a very nice leaping strike. Deal? Deal. I just love doing that so much. Although, I am running out of high altitude places, so if you know of a good spot, leave it in the comments. I just love Lazarus Week so much, dude. These crunching noises from the spear hitting the bones is so satisfying for some reason. I don't know what sound they used in the studio to make that, but I like it. Ooh, 11,000? My, my detonate just hit a crit 11,000 damage. Holy crap. Oh man, just cleared everything out. Lazarus is the best week! Wow. 22 minutes and 42 seconds. Extremely solid run. This is a great team. I hope we're doing more together. Honestly, the biggest reason I want to do Lazarus over Genesis this week is I want the Bone Rot Hatchet and the Bone Rot Spear with the Vicious perk as the random third perk. Because they drop with such good weapon perks. They're extremely high quality weapons that they give you here. It's just you have to land them, and I haven't landed a single one all week so far. But I've only done like five runs. Let me just loot all these chests while encumbered, because storage is just such an issue. See? There it is. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this bone rot spear this guy just linked me. It drops by default with Ancient Bane and Fortifying Perforate. The third perk is random, and if you get the Vicious perk on it, it's an amazing spear. I don't think you can roll Rogue on it, I've never seen someone roll Rogue on it before, but the Bone Rot Hatchet is the same deal. Ancient Bane and Refreshing Torrent, which is the best hatchet perk, and it's on the weapon itself. Third perk is random, if you get Vicious on it, man, it's a dream weapon. This guy in my lobby, Bonanza, he has it, and, you know, actually, I think the DM is still here, let me show it to you guys. Yeah, look at this Bone Rot Hatchet that he linked me to join the lobby. If you get Vicious on it, man, that is an insane weapon. I would like to have that. Dang, this team has some good damage. One phase chart is down to 30% HP. We're going to have to just kill him now. I'll flip through the side there, but he's going to destroy the other side in a second. Yep, 
There he goes. Yeah, with this team, it's faster just to one phase him. Honestly, it's not worth waiting and just slowing down the DPS. Oh yeah, we got something nice. Check out this Ice Gauntlet. Con and Int with Keen Vicious and Iced Refresh. That sounds like a pretty fun Ice Gauntlet in PvP. A 74% cooldown when you kill something with Ice Spike when the perk is on the weapon itself. Oh, don't you just love when that happens? We just started the run literally 10 feet from the starting point and the tank DC'd. Uh, apparently someone's in voice chat with them and his cat pressed the power bar. That sucks. Oh, we got an Icebound Tower Shield. These are the ones with the cool skins on them. Come on, be decent. Sturdy and hated. Hell yeah, dude. We can use that. I don't care if it has the wrong conditioning on it. The skin on it is just so cool. Sturdy and hated is like... You know, pretty good for all-purpose tanking, so I can honestly just use that for the skin. You know, funnily enough, I actually have the materials to make hundreds of these coatings. I thought I was running low, but since you have to gather the resources within mutations now, I have a ton of these offensive reagents. Like these lodestones that you get from Moat Rocks, these always used to be the limiting factor for me, but I have hundreds of them now. This is just one storage. I have... I think more up here. Okay, not that many more. There's a lot, but they're just spread out amongst my storage. Here's a few hundred more. All it takes to make a strong coating other than these is just some moat and some oil, and that's it. But you only get one of these per moat rock, so these can be pretty tricky to stock up on. Wow, we just got another really nice ice gauntlet. I just linked it in chat there, but check it out, man. Iced Refresh, Lost Bane, and Refreshing Move. Holy crap. I swear Ice Gauntlet is so cool, I wish it was viable in PvE. That's about as good as it gets, though, for a PvE Lost Gauntlet. Oh, next time it rotates to Barnacles and Black Powder, I'm gonna try that out, though. That's gonna be about a month, seeing as how it just came off rotation schedule. That sucks. Look at that, man. Iced Refresh, Lost Bane, and Refreshing. That's just all power right there. I'm sorry there's been so much Lazarus content in this video, but I just wanted to make sure that I get my 25 runs in for the week. But I think we're safe, there's 3 days left on the mutation and we only have 7 runs left. I've been going pretty hard on these, trying to get that Bone Rot Spear and Bone Rot Hatchet. We haven't had any luck with either, but with only 7 runs left, I'm pretty confident I can take a break and go do some other things before returning and still hit my weekly limit. So what I think I'd like to do now is finally test out this throwing hatchet, but in a manner that's not a complete waste of time. We're going to be farming a luck ice gauntlet called Yarn Grip here. It drops from Ivan the Inevitable in Northeast Evan Scale. Let me show you guys where. Right up here at Sky Song Crypt. My friend Reggae Bald Guy just invited me to do it, and uh, he invited me to join the Imbued Hatchet Farm as well. So apparently this guy knows about every luck weapon in the game. Dude, he dies so quick. I can't properly test out the hatchet here, but it does work out perfectly because Ivan the Inevitable along with the other bosses that we're farming, Slayer Roslin and Mordecai the Mortician are all lost mobs, and this hatchet just happens to have frost attunement on it, which is the best attunement to fight lost mobs with. They take an extra 40% frost damage, so this is a very favorable environment to test this hatchet out in. That's part of the reason I didn't show any footage of this hatchet inside of Lazarus, because this week is frost mutation, and every mob in there has either 50 or 75% frost damage absorption, so I did try it out, but they were basically soaking up the entire hit splat of attunement, and it was honestly just very underwhelming. Oh my god, stonecutter pants! That's a sorry, I'm eating something right now. But we just got a pair of stonecutter pants. Apparently, you can also get the woodworker hat here. I didn't look up any of the drop tables before coming here. Although, I know Sky Song Crypt is a very popular, like, fresh level 60 farming spot. Apparently, there's a lot of general goodies you can get here. I'm mainly here for the ice gauntlet, but if I can get the woodworker cap as well, that would be so awesome. Now, I gotta say, this isn't the most ideal place to test this hatchet out at, because literally, things die so quick. Like, ugh. Ooh, legendary. Let's see what this is. Sca this is the Yarn Gripper! <laughs> the bag was legendary because the scaling powder, but we got the Luck Ice Gauntlet. Let me just upgrade this to 600. There we go. Refreshing move, Deadly Frost, and Luck. That's a very nice PvE Ice Gauntlet. I just need to find, like, a big boss where I can focus headshots. I know eventually, in some future content, this hatchet is going to be, like, best in slot on some big boss where you can just land constant headshots, but for right now... I'm having a hard time figuring out where to use it at. 
Oh my god, would you look at that? We just got the woodworker cap from Slayer Oslin. Are you kidding me? This account has some different luck, man. We've been here less than two hours. We've snagged the luck ice gauntlet and now the woodworker cap as well. That that's just awesome, dude. That's everything that I wanted from here. What did he get? Oh, I mean, hey, keep it for the skin, man. You can use that for transmogs in the future. The shovel skin on the great axe is really cool. Well, since we had such amazing luck and got all the drops that we wanted from Sky Song Crypt in under two hours, we're gonna test this hatchet at a different farm and we can actually test it here. The mobs have more than like 10k HP or whatever. We're gonna be farming for the armor pants alongside the carapace of Corrupted Rage. I think that's what it's called. It's the breastplate of the Ancient Ward tanking set. It drops from the Siren's Fist and the Siren's Gun. One of my friends, Collect Vood, just told me he was getting a group together to farm these two bosses. We just loop between the two. And this also gives me a chance to use the full Admiral set from Mutated Barnacles and Black Powder. Full Lost Ward, full strength, nice set. Don't have the moat to slot any gems in it, but honestly, I don't think we need gems. Dang, okay, hold on. Okay, that was actually decent damage right there. <laughs> it is so hard to land headshots when you have five people with a warhammer flattening the boss using Wrecking Ball. But even just landing body shots, this thing is still outputting some nice damage. Forsaken Fire Staff of the Warden from what? From just a regular mob? I didn't even pay attention. Vicious, refreshing pillar of fire, and life stealing. I mean, it's Kana and Dex, so I'm gonna scrap it, but those are some pretty decent perks. When it's just one guy. Oh, 4K. Stop flattening the boss, dude. It's not a pancake. I can't get. Oh, dude, the combos. Throwing hatchet is so much freaking fun. 5.5K? And that's not even including the 600 attunement splat. That was really a 6K if you think about it. I swear, when I get the right scenario for this hatchet, like the right boss, 4.6 into 4.6, 4.7, 4.3, and these aren't even headshots. Like, think about it. Just think about it. A boss with a giant head that doesn't move much, that's, well, I mean, that's Lazarus. I basically just described Chardis, but it's Ice Mutation, man. This t hatchet's terrible in Ice Mutation. Perfect. Perfect. Ooh, we got the beginning ring. Let's see if this is in 590 plus. This is actually a really nice ring. Ah, 527. Third perk is refreshing. So it's basically the featherweight ring, but for strength. But I don't know if you can swap that gem out. Uh, actually, yeah, you can. Although the emerald is a pretty good gem to have anyway. Thrust is in literally every dungeon. And thank you to an agent of chaos. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos as well. And I'm glad you find them informative. Like I've said before, they were never meant to be informative, but that is a huge bonus if you guys learn something from watching them. Well, we put about five hours into the Sirens farm, didn't get anything, and it looks like the group disbanded, so... Uh, sadly, I'm out of here, but there is an elite chest run going on at Castrum Precipium in three minutes, so I'm gonna try to get over there before it starts. You know what, I only have seven mutations left for the week, let me just finish these off before we do anything else. This has to be my priority number one, because last week the mutation rotated and I had one run left still, I wasn't staying on top of them, so I don't want to get too carried away, let me finish these off before we do anything else. <gasps> Wait. Thwarting counter, come on, man. You know, you know, Scylla might, does that proc on Scylla? I'm not sure, but we actually got a legendary bone rot spear. Third perk is thwarting counter. Such a strong spear though, man. Ancient Bane and Fortifying Perforate, they really do make these M10s worth running. I, I don't feel comfortable skipping these. I'm gonna keep that. I have to do some damage testing, maybe in regular Lazarus, to see if that thwart encounter does work on Scylla. Because I know, obviously, Scylla and Chartus, they have grit. You can't crowd control them. But I don't know if it's an active grit. You know what I mean? Because it says targets with an active grit. So that's going to require some testing. But if that does work, oh my god, that's going to be a monster for Scylla. I'm taking that to 625. Okay, while that was satisfying, I got something even more satisfying to show you guys. I think I've just received the best pair of pants I've ever had on this account. 
Check these pants out. Pure intelligence, light legwear with shirking energy, resilient, and empowering fireball. It does not get any better than that for pants. I got these from a regular mob right before we came into this room right here. And I'm just blown away. Oh my god. You know what? I remember to put it on. Let's go ahead and use the throwing hatchet for this final charge kill. Hold on. Let me get a few hits in there. Once I get the rending throw on it, that's when the big damage boost comes. Okay, 22,000, 18,000. This is not even... Uh, with the attunement slot, by the way. It's still doing almost 2,000, even with the frost damage absorption. No, this is decent. This is actually very nice. Yeah, we still managed to kill him on the second down, so... I mean, the difference in DPS isn't that bad between a spear and a throwing hatchet. This is actually carrying its weight, which is impressive. There's not even a lightning gem in there. And there's no Bane on the weapon, just think about that. Oh look, another legendary Bone Raw weapon. Too bad it's an Ice Gauntlet. Though I'm not actually sure what the weapon perk is on the Bone Raw Ice Gauntlet. So, let's check that out in a second here. Let's see, comes with uh, Ice Refresh. And eh, Chain Ice is the random third perk. Yeah, I'll hang on to it, sure. Dang, that's actually a really nice Beastbane hammer. And the funny thing about that is we also got a really nice Beastbane Gravesword I hadn't shown you guys yet. Beastbane, Trenchant Recovery, and Skyward Nullification is not that great, but a combination of Bane and Trenchant Recovery is so great for a DPS Gravesword. It's like a good balance between damage and sustain. When you're in the Onslaught stance, you take extra damage, so it's definitely helpful to have some sort of recovery. And there's the final Lazarus run of the week. Ended on a nice gold run. Pretty good team here. Let's loot these final chests and get out of here. Well, it looks like we didn't get the spear or the hatchet we were going for this week. Just looted the final chest on the 25th run and ended up with basically a full inventory of purples. But that's okay. We gave it an honest shot. We did all 25 runs. Next time it rotates to Lazarus, I'll be sure to give it another shot because those weapons are worth hunting for. I'll be back week and week again until I get them. Oh, this is nice. Light Headwear, Condex, Slowing Rupture, and Angry Earth Ward. If I could get a piece with Angry Earth Ward and Leeching Cross cut on it, that would be so good. Let's have a peek at the Umbra Shard collection that we've been building up for quite some time. Let's see if we hit 700k yet. I believe I store them here in Wrestleshore. Yep, I do. Let me count them up real quick. Actually, let me deposit what I got on me and then count them up. And it looks like we have a grand total of 745,200 Umbra Shards. We're only roughly 250k off the 1 million Umbra Shard mark. That's kind of crazy. I have more Umbra Shards than gold. We have about 90k gold. Open the company. We still have 450k in here, so that's like 540k gold. We actually passed that in terms of Umbra Shards. God, I play this game a lot. But anyway, we're going to be ending this episode here, so thank you very much for watching. I have a project that I want to start working on on this account, but I don't think I should do it in this episode. For my YouTube analytics, most viewers don't make it past the 9 minute mark, so the smart thing to do would just be to start next episode with that. Thank you very much for watching, leave a like and subscribe before you head out. The next episode will be up in the usual 3 days, you can count on it, and I'll see you guys then.